Hey, how's it going? Good. It's Kerm. Uh, my grandma painted that for me in 1984. It's incredible. Um, this episode, we interviewed tattooer Evan Davis. He's a tattooer here in Nashville. If you're interested in checking out his work, it is Evan Davis Tattoo on Instagram. Um, we just riffed. It was like a series of riffs. And um, we let the riff breathe. You know what I'm saying? And get up in there. Um, yeah, about an hour in, we had some audio issues. So we included about eh, 45 minutes in this YouTube video of the interview. The other portion of the interview, um, we got some pretty good audio from the, from the front camera. And we're going to include that in our Patreon membership. So if you're interested in our, in becoming part of our Patreon, uh, subscribers, we have one tier, $5 and, um, You'll get bonus content from this episode, from Julian Baker, um, and other episodes that we've done. Um, I think it's worth it. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot. Have a good time. And um, just tell Kerm you love him, you know, next time you see him. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right all right that's legit <laughs> i'm so pumped all right okay. luke we got to turn these mics on brother was that not badass it was pretty badass okay good good hey this is evan davis do you know him hey everybody hey hello check 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 I feel like we're going to play a show, and I guess we kind of are. In a yeah, way. it feels like it's going to be it good. It feels like a music show. Hey, COVID. Nice to meet you, you too. <laughs> Hey, um, thank you for coming. Is this too loud? You feel like it's a little too loud? No? no? Okay, a little bit loud. Is it a little loud? Luke, Thanks, just playing, buddy. Thanks for the honesty. I got you. Yeah, just kick him down a little bit. Um, this is Make It Perfect Live, and this is the second one we've done. The first one um, was pre bummer. Yeah, pre-COVID, thank you. And uh, glad you guys came out. Um, glad you guys are here. Thanks for taking a risk and coming out. And uh, we hope that we can just be ourselves and you guys can be yourselves. And we can just hang out and be kindergartners if you want, you know? <laughs> I do. Anyway, Evan, here. So this is your palette board, dude. Sick. It was in the it's back of my so truck. Sick. It's so nice. Very cool. I it's very professional. <laughs> Man, the monitors out here are pretty crazy. Yeah, um, so, I, what's that? It's weird to hear yourself yeah. talk. Do you like the sound live. of your own voice? Does anybody? All? Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah, I kind of do. Dude, well, there's times when I don't. That's a superpower, man. Well, that's a super ego. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I get stuff on the floor, I'll clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> to okay. the manager in the back. Yeah, <laughs> just, you know, trying to do my. Uh, my part here. Hey, come on, you're late, but it's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it better. <laughs> cool blue shoes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Put you on the spot. It's all right. Um, look at this little, look at that, ready? Oh my goodness, it's so thin. Yeah, that's what they are. It's Never beautiful, mind. wait, so can I just squirt it like that? Uh-huh. Oh wow, yeah. It's oh, pretty handy. Way better. We use Lucas Paint. You ever use Luke? Anybody paint? Paint? Use Lucas Paint? <laughs> yeah, at all? This is not Lucas Paint. Okay. Um, so we were back there, and um, I get nervous. I just do. And, um, and, uh, <clears throat> Are you going there? I'm not going there yet. I'm not going there yet. But uh, we were back there, and I started to get bubble guts, you know, and stuff like that. And um, then I was thinking of all the questions I'm going to ask Evan. And the first question I want to ask you is... 
Do you find it hard to look people in the eye when you're speaking oh, to them? Oh, hell yeah, yeah. I came out here and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Why is it hard for you? Um, I don't know, just social nervousness, mm -hmm. you know? Being on stage is tough. Yeah, you on know? the floor though, dude. That's true, you're right. <laughs> I guess that's better. I don't know, I feel like I was mm -hmm. in a band for a long time and mm -hmm. I never got used to like going on stage and yeah. being in the, in the limelight, you know? Mm -hmm. Did you, did you love the, <clears throat> you know, when you're in that flow state, when you're playing shows and you look over at one of your bandmates, I don't know if you did that or if oh, you were yeah. in your own world, cool. And y'all just kind of, you make eye contact and you just know. Yeah, like, you're you know like, it's you're fine. In that state. It's yeah, fine, that's cool. whatever. That's cool. As far as like looking people in the eye when you're speaking with them, it's a pretty intimate thing to do. And is there, is there, there's a part of me that when I'm speaking with someone and like I'm looking them in the eyeball, well, it's usually one eyeball. <laughs> you just you can't really one. look at two eyeballs at once. Yeah. But uh, I notice that I try to, if I, if I really want to turn up the, what am I trying to say here? If I really want to let someone know I'm listening to them and potentially creep them out, I'll look through their pupil. If they're talking about something emotional, I look at the left pupil because symbolically the left side of the body is the feminine side and symbolically huh. the right side is the masculine side. So interesting. When You've got in, a methodology. Emotional potential. What's people. that? You've got a methodology of looking at people in the I eye. I do. Wow. I do. Yeah. And it's weird and sometimes creeps people out. But do you, you know feel what? like you notice a change in like when you do that? Like in the me intensity or them? of the conversation? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can always tell when someone's unsure. You know what I mean? And like, right. like if you're, if you're, listening you're actively listening and you really want to like well, show them that you're God, really something. engaged and really yeah. like paying attention yeah yeah like whoa like I've um, it's a scary thing to do because it sometimes when it happens to me it makes me feel really uncomfortable if someone is like looking me in the eyes like all the time so it can get uncomfortable. God, I've definitely tried to get better at it, especially with like, uh -huh. I've noticed with tattooing people, mm -hmm. I, I spend so much time like looking at the tattoo that I'm doing and mm -hmm. not at their face. Oh yeah. You right, know, so right, yeah. as the years have gone on, I've tried to like pay more attention to people's faces and like make mm -hmm. that direct eye contact, you know, so that I remember them, you know, right. a lot of times I'll see people and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, like shit, I know I've tattooed you. And what then like, tattoo on you? yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as soon as I see the tattoo, I remember everything, you know, because I spent all that time looking at it. Mm -hmm. do, do, you ever have, do you ever have times where you just, like in the beginning, where the tattooing and the process was so intimate and uncomfortable that you were like kind of stressed and nervous the whole time? Oh yeah, for sure. But I think, yeah. I think I, my way of dealing with that was just to not focus on it and just be like, I don't really, I think in retrospect, I realized that I was like more nervous about that stuff. But at the time I was just like, it was all just so much. I was just like trying to keep my head down and do sure. it, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think is, you know, with anything, as you do it a lot, you get more comfortable mm -hmm. and more honest with the experience, you know, with people, you know? Mm -hmm. I definitely tried to like, I think early on, again, with like the social thing, like I think I like almost like over mm -hmm. did the social aspect of mm -hmm. it. I was very like, hey, yes. like, how's it going, yes. Yes. you know? Yep. And I think, yeah, as time goes on, I try and be just more real and more mm. like calm with people, you know? Oh, that's good to hear. That's like, yeah, that, that's, I feel like I'm trying to do that same work too. Cause I always feel like I have to be up and like jovial and happy right, and dude. all that. The, I went to a Hugh Ugh. Babies right before this. Oh, what? And, and I went to Hugh Babies yeah, right yeah, before this. And, the, and yeah. the manager there was like, he was, he was like a thousand percent. He was like, hey, Next level. Like, thank yeah. you so much for coming. Yeah, right. I was like, so oh, it's your soul. <laughs> yeah, he like personally brought out my ticket for me. And I was like, wow, dude, you are doing the most right now. I can tell why you're the manager. <laughs> it's like Chick-fil-A. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was like, dude, this guy is like dedicated to <laughs> serving people burgers. God, man. What kind of burger did you get over there? Just the double cheese burger. Double cheese. You know, nothing fancy. You added a patty? Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta stack those pats, dude. Did you get some fries over there at all? Yeah, or? I got some okay. fries. I'm a grown boy. I need I need a little something on the side, you know. <laughs> Could go a lot of different ways. That's fine. But okay, whoa, everybody, this is Luke Yates. He rules. You might just want to clap or snap. That's cool. 
He's the man. And thank you, Alyssa, back there, the gallerist at Fort Houston here, for letting us do this. Um, yeah, when we were on the phone <clears throat> a couple weeks ago when I, I called you, you, we were talking about something, who, who knows, talking about the show, and then we had a couple side conversations. And I, mean, I oftentimes don't really think about what I'm gonna ask or whatever, I kinda mm -hmm. am that type of personality, just kinda wing it. But um, you mentioned, I think I said, I said something that I was dealing with in my life, and you said, God works in funny ways. And oh, I didn't, ex yeah. I didn't <laughs> expect you to say that. I don't know why I've put you in, my, in a category in my mind of not having like a, a type of belief system and like spirituality. Trans transcendent thing, yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm curious, I wanted to talk to you about that because it really, it was really great to hear it in that moment. Yeah, I cool. mean, I think that, you know, life is funny and I think mm -hmm. <laughs> some of the, some of the things that initially are like the things that we try and avoid, like kind of this, the specifically talking about like mm -hmm. some of the stuff we were talking mm -hmm. about, you know, it's like on paper, it's like some terrible, awful shit that you would never want to experience. But I feel like that stuff is always the stuff that like you look back on and you like laugh about and you're like, thank goodness that happened. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. I don't know. Just trying to be encouraging about that. Yeah. Does it feel like the, <clears throat> so, from that I get that some of the stuff that makes us feel uncomfortable we look back at and we're like kind of glad that happened. Right, life. you wouldn't trade it for things. Yeah, that's cool. What's something like that going on for you other than this right now? Something bad that's happened that I wouldn't trade for something? Sure. Yeah. Oh. Um, um, oof. Yep. Here we yeah, go. That's tough. Yeah, we're getting intimate here. What's um, up? Okay. <sighs> On the spot, brother. That's how we do it. I don't it. know. I guess like falling outs with people. Yeah, that that's I've really had, good. You yep. know, or like learning how to like understand what somebody you've loved is like somebody that you need to like distance yourself from or something and just be. Yeah, stuff like that mm -hmm. where it's almost stuff like as a kid. I thought that I wouldn't have to do if I just like was, you know, nice to people and like played things well, you know, but sometimes you got to make tough calls. And I feel yeah. like the older I get, the more those tough calls stack up, you know, life mm -hmm. is ridiculous and mm -hmm. very unexpected yeah. for sure. Do you find it easier to make those decisions with, uh, with people that potentially need to, y'all need to kind of split like yeah. as you get older? Yeah, I guess so. I think, I think the older I get, the more discerning you get yeah, with like what you, Thank you what you need and what you want, you know. Yeah. Um, which maybe is just me like justifying turning into a grumpy old man. <laughs> See, grumpy old man. Yeah. A little bit. He's maybe. Cool. Cool. <laughs> I feel like a grumpy old freaking bag. Like we were talking about. Yeah. In there, remember that? <laughs> a leaky bag. The leaky bag That's all we are. on the we're airplane. Just leaky leaky yeah. emotional bags. Yeah. <laughs> we're oh, trying to man. control our juices. A lot of yelling happening online right now. Like yelling, like. Just from uh, different, like, political ideologies and then oh, dude, yeah. all that stuff. You know, it's dude, like uh, crazy. Harper, my girlfriend, she's mm -hmm. on. Uh, she just got on Facebook as kind of like an observer. <laughs> That's tough. To like just see kind of what like <sighs> the conservative right like right. is talking about, dude. Mm -hmm. And it is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it is why it is like ten times more insane than I thought it was gonna be. What were some of the things that you were? Dude, she showed me uh, this yeah. thing the other day of Keanu Reeves, which is like oh, yeah. he's like. So, uh, this yeah. super beloved dude who's like gone through terrible, terrible shit and is mm -hmm. like, you know, just a really, like basically one of the most like down to earth Hollywood guys. And it was like a photo of him and it was like, what was it? It was like Hollywood. They like 
all the stars are now like drinking baby's blood and it, oh, it's Jesus, like the younger man. and the more innocent the better and they like carry it around in a canteen and they're like don't give it you know they're just like walking around with it in broad daylight Wait, this is like conservative this is hyper conservative this is like this is like some like mom that, that she like went to wow like her kids went to school with her or whatever like down in williamson county mm -hmm. like just straight up believing that god man they're drinking baby's blood god i would love to drink baby's blood dude that's not true. <laughs> Spoiler, it's not true. Thanks, dude. dude Canceled, bro! <laughs> what a terrible way to live, though. Like, right. imagine, like, actually waking up and being, like, waking up and, like, checking the news and being like, well, I found out today that, you know, they're drinking baby's blood. And it's the new thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it's all the yeah. rage. And it's my duty to personally post on Facebook and put <laughs> into it. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm waiting for the day. No, I'm not. I was, uh... I think I try to stay away from like ideological thinking, like black and white either way, you know, because like I, I spent a long time in the evangelical church and um, kind of that's kind of how it was taught was the, the abstract thinking was kind of thrown out the window, you know what I'm saying? Right. And like, and I'm not saying all the time, but my particular experience, that's how it seemed to come across and like I was... I think the further I get away from that kind of thinking, and I'm not saying that I'm far away from it in every dimension, my personality, but like, like it's, a, it's helped me hold a complex mirror up to myself and see what I, if I, I said this before, if I see, if I feel so strongly about something, I'm trying to identify what in that do I possess? You know what I'm saying? Like in my right. personality, if I like, So it's kind of like a self-reflective exercise, I guess, to mm -hmm. find out where the, where the malevolence is in my own mind and heart, sure. you know? So it's yeah. like, so... I'm proud of you. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that sounds really intense. <laughs> it, is, it is, and I'm not saying that I'm, you know, I, it's just helping me see how I think a little clearer, I guess. But just thinking is tough. Is it not tough? It's <laughs> tough. Thinking is tough. And all, it seems like all the mechanisms that we have now to form these like like intact and in touch thoughts about ourselves and reality is like those things are kind of breaking down you know and that's that's scary to me a little bit but I think art in general whatever you want to call that kind of helps regulate some of those things for me anyway do you find that at all um I think I know what you're talking about you're talking about like <laughs> COVID is like kind of messing with our our faculties, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah we definitely absolutely. still have like monkey brains and we're like set up in these very specific confines of the mm -hmm. way things are and they've fallen apart. And mm -hmm. so we're like, yeah, scrambling a little. How do we exist? How do you, how do you hold, how do you, how do you regulate emotional responses to things when you feel so gripped by something like that, that just kind of, the, the idea kind of takes you away and you know, how do you bring yourself back to like a homeostasis? Mm, I, try not think too much about the future yeah wow. <laughs> definitely nice i try and not think like about worst case scenarios i think a lot mm -hmm. of people like my friends that i talk to about stuff they like immediately go like 10 12 steps ahead and like yeah. possibly a negative direction right do you feel like you think about the past a lot at all does that ever trip you up <sighs> um not really does that sound no. trip you up I, I i guess i'm not that smart i don't think about things very often <laughs> I'm just doing it I'm just doing me I love that I, no I know I don't I don't I don't look back on the past very much cool. like I feel like I used to more like I used to go to bed and like think about like a conversation I had and be mm -hmm. like oh I like should have like said that differently or whatever but I don't really do that anymore like yeah. dwell yeah I don't really dwell That's on cool. things hey I'm sorry to interrupt no, I'm do you need a moment your batteries sick cool. I won't we'll say jump. anything until you're back I'll just say everything bro Hey, Evan. Hey. <laughs> you guys feel crazy in this time, COVID? You feel like you have a hard time getting your vibes together, like your thoughts and stuff? Does it, do you, do you notice that you're able to still like kind of regulate your own emotions and stuff like that? Is it hard? Seems pretty hard, yeah. <laughs> Just an open question to everybody. <laughs> How are you with your uh, deepest, deepest, darkest thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Is that easy? <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs>
feel like there's definitely been a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like at the same time, I feel like I can be doing the worst mentally that I've ever done in my life and the best at the same time during this time. It's like a really Dude, weird that's like mixture. Healthy, I think. That seems healthy to me. Maybe. It's something. I'm, Dude, that's I'm really existing. cool to hear. I'm trucking along. Awesome. God. Jerry's out of Ram in East Nashville. East, East Nashville got fucked up by that tornado. And uh, it's a bummer because we love that place. Love Amanda, Marshall, Hannah, and the other people that work there. And I don't know your name, but that's okay. Um, and we need some of this Lucas brand paint. More of it. So thank you again. And also Lem Shoes. Do you ever heard of Lem Shoes ever? Got them right fucking here. So we wear Lem shoes and we like it. And they got a lot of new ones out. Send us your money. D dude, okay. How long you been tattooing, bro? Um, five years now. Five years. Yeah. yeah. I'm no longer like the new kid. I guess I'm just <laughs> doing it. You know? What where what led you to tattooing? Um I was in school for art mm -hmm. and I just kind of was like I realized I didn't really want to do the fine art thing, you know? I feel mm -hmm. like I was making work that was like a little pretentious, maybe. Oh, talk <laughs> you know? about that. Why is it pretentious? Why do you, well, why do you feel I, that? I feel like I was making stuff that, I guess it's not pretentious. It, it felt like it wasn't me, though. It was like work that was very like backed up by like writing, you know? Mm -hmm. Like it was all about like your artist statement. I did it. was it. like yeah. more like conceptual stuff sure. and like not really applicable to like your average person, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and. I like art that everybody can just sort of like look at and just be like, oh, is that pretty? Like, yeah, cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned you mentioned earlier that your favorite type of art is kids art. Yeah. And you yeah. have, yeah. I was telling you also, my, mm -hmm. my dad over there, he has a uh, art school and I taught kids art there uh -huh. uh, for a couple of years and it was so sick. And I've tattooed some of their work on myself because yeah, it's literally awesome. the best stuff in the world. <laughs> It's really free. It's so good. Yeah, I was saying that's yeah. what I like. Your yeah. work almost like has that oh, that free kid yeah. art quality to it, where you're just you're just doing it. You know. Thanks, man. Well, I I I'll pay, I'll hit you back with that. Like the precision that I see in your tattoos is really that to me it seems like it would be it'd be maddening for me, and I'm I'm I admire when I see tattooers that can have that type of precision and pull lines and stuff like that like that's why i do it is because it drives me crazy it's not in my nature to be <laughs> like Excellent. perfect like that so yeah. i try and do it i try and do things that make me like almost like aren't fun yeah. during it you know yeah. but then at the end i'm i'm happy with accomplished because, yeah. that's cool man what's your favorite um well i don't know much about tattooing other than like hanging out with tattooers i guess but what's your favorite Superlative question. What's your favorite type of image to tattoo on somebody? I see that you do a lot of animals. Is there yeah. a certain animal that you really enjoy tattooing? Mm, I like it when people bring me things that I would never have like sat and thought to do something, or they're like, mm -hmm. I want to do this like rare breed of like, you know, oh, cool. some weird like fish or something that I would have never like thought even existed, you know? And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, let me have fun with that. Have but you, mm -hmm. right now, I'm, kind of getting into more like just really basic like timeless mark making and stuff that's cool. like really repetitive and really like almost like I don't know like tribal I guess or almost just yeah. like just super simple forms and stuff that have been around for like forever and ever mm -hmm. you know so I, I think when I started tattooing I was doing very like trendy things mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. they were very like of the moment which was cool too. What were some of those trends that you saw that you were you were kind of folding into maybe for a second? Um, I feel like I did a lot of like minimal like figure things, which were like oh, they're okay. still really cool, okay. but mm -hmm. like you know, kind of almost like Picasso y or Matisse -y, sure. like little figures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I feel like it was it definitely like got me a little bit noticed, but as time has gone on, I just want to be, you know, it's, it's hard to, I'm trying, it's hard to be like timeless, but mm -hmm. still do it in a way that feels like fresh yeah. and not like it's just been done a million times, you know? So you said you grew up in Nashville, um, yeah. in Berry Hill area? Yeah. Just right over here. You, uh, 
What do you still like about Nashville? <laughs> that. Um, I like Holy Nashville. Dee, yeah. I like Nashville a lot. It's changed so much, you mm -hmm. know. I don't mm -hmm. really, I don't hang out in the same places I did as a kid, and I don't do the same things or mm -hmm. go to the same, you know, whatever. So it doesn't really feel like the exact same place I grew up in. So mm. I think that definitely helps, but mm. you know, I, I know there are probably some people here who've heard me say this, but I feel like I wanted to like move away really badly, you know, growing up being like alt in, in a Southern city or like, yep. you know, screw this place. Yep. Like I want to move, you know, Yep. but you know, the more I went to other places, especially like on tour and mm. like just traveling and stuff, I've, I just really liked coming back here and mm. I respect a lot of artists who kind of just like stay or like make where they're from cool rather than going somewhere else mm. where it's already happening, you know, so I, I tried to stay here and sort of, you know, make it cool or I'll, well, do, do my thing here instead thing. of, you know. yeah, yeah. I heard a, a rapper say one time in a song, it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. Mm, I, there thought, you go. I thought that was really cool. Can't Dude, yeah, Drake was a big him. inspiration for me for staying here, to nice. be honest. I was super into Drake at the time, and I was like, dude, he put Toronto on the map. Like, uh, I'm going to stay yes. in Nashville. That's oh. cool. Heck yeah. I don't think I've ever heard Drake's music ever. Maybe I should. What's a good song? You've heard it on the radio. Uh, I have? Oh, yeah, okay. you should have heard it. You can't not hear Drake, I don't dude. To... Okay, okay, yeah, I'm down with it. I'll... Tell me a song. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, his album Take Care is, I think, my most listened to album no of job. all time, yeah. Cool. It's just a cool. sick R&B record. What's the, oh, the cell phone song. Call me on my cell phone. Oh, yeah. What, what is that? Hotline Bling. Hotline Bling? That's him. The Hotline Bling. Okay. Is that on a previous record? Isn't he that hot bling boy? <laughs> all those kids are talking about. <laughs> I don't even know what you're referring to, but I love it. Do you, you guys like Drake at all? Cool, cool. He's fine. He's gotten so big, dude. Bigger, he's like, I love it. <laughs> is there anybody bigger than Drake now? I don't know. He's been like literally the biggest huh. thing since like 2008. Macklemore, dude. Dude, Macklemore. <laughs> How could I forget? Thank you. I do like a couple of them damn songs, man. That 10,000 hours gets me crushing. You know what I mean? Because I'm like 10,000 hours, dude, pro. You got to keep doing your shit. But then I'm like, oh, this isn't, very, this isn't as cool as I want it to be, I guess. But, <laughs> but good for him. Good, Good, for for him. Him. Good for him. Has he done anything? I don't know. Maybe. Other think, than probably I, make some money yeah, here and there. He probably got rich enough to just not work, which would be sick. Would you like to not work at all? Well, I mean, you, you've got to do something to yeah. not go crazy and stay. You like drink baby's blood? Yeah, you start drinking baby's blood. You retire. Might help you. you. <laughs> or not you, but I'm just playing. <laughs> Maybe. I don't, no, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'm going to help anybody, man. <laughs> That's fucked. Uh, there was a like strange addiction show where there was like this vampire couple and they're like, we have to drink each other's blood. Like, every what day. the fuck? Yeah, dude, dude, people do it. Are you serious? People do it, man. I almost pooped my pants back there. I was so nervous. <laughs> I did a little. I did like that. That's when I walked past you to go in the bathroom. I was like, don't listen. That's fine. Good to meet you, by the way. <laughs> You ever pooped your pants? You have? Yeah? As an adult? <laughs> have you? That's okay. Right. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Dude, we were talking about this like semi recently and yep. uh, all the girls I know were like, I think it's a guy thing because like any pants? any any guy that I know has like had, you know, huh. due to in the pants story for sure, like in adulthood, but G.I. Joe went swimming in the water. <laughs> I didn't Really? Yeah, I don't know. Cool. I'm not gonna walk up to girl. Hey, you're, 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 I win though. That's the stupid shit. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I'm just being me. You know, just shaking it. You know what I mean? We're just leaky bags, man. We're trying <laughs> to you. control our juices. You know, we're trying to put good juices in. Beaky legs. Yeah. Spoonerism. What's going on here? Hell. Nah, it's a pretty hell. What are you doing over there? Do you know? I just no. I'm just kind of like liking the way I, I ate mushrooms a couple, like maybe like a year ago, the day before my birthday. Uh -huh. It was awesome. It was a great experience. And, um, and I was painting with oil on, uh, when I lived in Columbia, Tennessee. And uh, second time I ever 
did that, and I was by myself out in the country. It was, it was beautiful. It really was. It's the way to go. It was cool. Right. And so I, I was up on the, the canvas. Hello? Um, and I was like this, like watching the bristles <laughs> go through the oil paint. It was fucking beautiful. I was, just, I was like, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and then I, and then <laughs> I love the camera. I love the attention. Um, but then I came out the next day, and I was like, well, that was a really, really micro. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying. And then I, I went inside and I thought I made this badass dinner for myself, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll put this shit in there. This is beautiful. Like, this is you such were a dance and you yeah. were in the flow of it. <laughs> I was prancing around. What did you make? I don't know. It was something, it, but, but, it, <laughs> but I, it was like some kind of chili thing <laughs> with a shitload of cheese on it. And, yeah, you got to have cheese. Yeah, but you gotta go cheese. the next day was not cool. And I, I had put, I just put it in the fridge without any covering over it. <laughs> you take it out and you're like, why did I, what was I doing? Ugh, I, I feel was like, having fun. I feel like chili is not what you want to see on mushrooms probably. <laughs> you know? Chile. <laughs> I'm, I'm just imagining you cook it up like a Stouffer's TV dinner. <laughs> <or some shit. laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you like to cook? Dude, I, I do. I used to be really bad at it, but uh, Harper and I like nice. have been learning together over the years, cool. and we've definitely upped our game, dude. We're nice. we're in there cooking crazy stuff Like now. what kind of crazy stuff? We made Penang from scratch recently, Penang? which is really fun. Like we've learned mm. about making like the curry paste from scratch, mm, and, like getting mm, all mm. the stuff and making the mortar oh, and pestle, cool. and like we did, uh, did a beef bolognese recently. We've just been, you know, nice. it's, that we're, I was talking to her about this. It's mm -hmm. just ridiculous that, like, especially during COVID, we've had all this time to sit at home and like research things and cook, you know. And it's like we have the ability to look at these like master chefs who have been like working their whole lives Guy to figure Fieri. out stuff. Yeah, Guy Fieri. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Uh, Everybody hates him. Don't know why. Dude, no, uh, he's no, sick. Everybody loves him. Oh, dude, my, my yeah, no, people like him now. I think it's changed. <laughs> cool. cool. Have you seen his Hot Ones episode? Yeah. Oh no, I haven't. Dude, it's sick. Luke showed me Hot Ones. Is it good? Yeah. Dude, he's all about the youth, man. He's That's cool. About, he's all about teaching kids. Pod. Yeah. It's <laughs> dude, hearing that song literally changed my life. Youth of the Nation. Youth, youth of the Nation cool. was probably the most like pivotal music moment. It was the first time I had seen an Xbox and the first time that I heard POD. And I was like, this is so... This is what I was this, fucking I meant for. Yeah, I didn't know life yeah. could be this cool. They read my damn mind out here. I've got to share an anecdote. I, yeah, hit it, Luke. I... Uh, I... Hello? Hi. This is a, one time in elementary school, me and my friend uh, came up with a jump rope routine. And the, 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 this whole thing... We did all kinds of tricks, and the song was Youth of the Nation. Uh, beautiful. I don't, think, you know, I, I don't think songs get better than that. Do you know any of the tricks? Um, yeah, you know, I did the, I could do the two, and I could do the cross thing. Mm -hmm. And then we had the, the big kicker move was when we had one long jump rope, mm -hmm. and we were swinging it. You know, one of us would jump in it. And then we, we swapped ends, and we, we both threw the end at the same time and caught it. And that was the big, like, you know. Like you nailed that. Fire moment. Mushrooms. That's how I came up with the routine. Nice. In elementary school, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's pretty sick. That's cool, man. Do you ever jump rope when you were a kid? Um, I did for, uh, I did fencing. And that oh, was that's part, bad ass. That was Who part of that? our warm-up. We had to do jump rope, yeah. Where did you, where, where did you f do fencing? Nashville Fencing Academy? Yeah. No, I is think that what it's called? What it's called. Was it? Yeah, 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 straight up. But yeah, dude, our ooh, our fencing ooh, teacher ooh. like mm -hmm. got in this uh, oh. motorcycle accident uh -huh. and like lost part of his like frontal lobe. Oh, fuck. And so he was super deadpan, except when he would show anger. And there was me and my friends still joke about this oh, time when he was like one of our friends couldn't learn how to parry four and he'd finally like lost it. It was the first time we'd see him do anything other than just like talk to us like this. And he just got so pissed and he was like, 
what's gonna happen when you're out in the real world and you can't parry four? <laughs> so we'd always joke about like getting mugged in an alley and we're like, ah, unguard. <laughs> Good thing I know. <laughs> Got it. That's awesome. What is that that you're referring to? I don't know what that is. What, parry four? Yeah. yeah parrying is like you move your blade certain ways to get the attacking blade out of the way. Oh. And it's different like motions. Are there yeah. sets of that technique or is it just one thing? That like one move, No, move. there's there's all sorts of types of fencing. There's cool. like every, there's like four different types and each type has its own sword and its own stance and its own like moves. Wow. It's really weird. I felt like I was in an anime cuz like people would come Sick. like they'd come like traveling and there'd be like this new dude who like had a stance like a monkey or something, you know, and he'd just school everybody or yeah. like a 12-year-old girl would come through and just like ruin everybody. That's like sweet. Did you ever did, so does it hurt? Um, it can, popped. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it can hurt. Like, I, never, can, I never got too hurt on it. Can you rate the hurt, rate the pain? It's not One bad. I mean, you can get, like, bruised and stuff, but it's oh, nothing cool. like... I mean, you're, like, really suited up, you know? Is it hot as fuck in that suit? Yes, dude. Oh, Tight. my God. The masks get dank. <sighs> they get super now? stanky. Good Lord. How old were you when you did that? Mm, I was... Uh, I don't know. How, how old was I? <laughs> 13. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. My parents knew that I wasn't uh, probably going to be a football guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you're going to dance and gymnastics. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Love it. I'm trying to think of the deepest question I can ask you. <laughs> Not in front of my parents, dude. No. <laughs> that is an obstacle for me a little bit, honestly. <laughs> That's okay. That's my, that's for me to work around. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Seriously, it really is. Um, yeah, let me, whenever I'm thinking and trying to ask, I go, I go, I go uh, uh, can you hear me do that shit? Where the hell did Gabe go? Gabe. Boom. Did you ever see Requiem for a Dream? <laughs> no. I did not, sorry. <laughs> I feel like I missed out on a lot of classics. I like just saw Titanic for the first time, like pretty recently. And what else did you just see that we just talked about earlier? Oh, Idiocracy. Yes, did you all Dude. see that Idiocracy? Dude, yes, yeah, that's a good so one. That's good. A good one. Where the guy in the recliner and he just takes a, cr I need that recliner. Yeah. <laughs> It's like about the the future of America, and it's like obviously it's like everybody just got so stupid, and like uh, this dude is in a time capsule, right? And he <laughs> he wakes up in the future. And he's like not smart, but he's the smartest person in the world now. And like uh, the president's like a pro wrestler, and like Costco is basically a country inside the U.S. <laughs> like the government is Starbucks. It's I oh know Star <laughs> Starbucks is a, like a brothel. Wait, say it again. Starbucks is like for prostitutes. I go there every day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a monk. I've been spending a lot of time at Starbucks, man. It's oh, scary Jesus. though, dude. Watching it was like, it was funny, but it was scary because in some ways it felt like a little bit of a version of the way things are. It's happening. Like, yeah, like dude. 2002 or something, God. like really early. But I mean, we do have a reality show host as our president. Oh, dude, yeah. You know, I feel like every now and then, or like every month there's like some new headline where it just looks like, it almost looks like if somebody was like writing a show of like how they would think America would go, <laughs> you know? <laughs> there's some people who think that is the case. Oh yeah, dude, the, the master puppeteers up there. Feels like something like, hey, you know what? <clears throat> I, uh, I was talking about Trump in another episode of one of these with a, with a guy named Mike and- um, Wait, Mike, uh... Friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I tattooed yeah. him like pretty early oh, on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Cool yeah. dude. Yeah, Real he was cool like, dude. he was on, he was like, with it, man. yeah, he yeah. was like, I'm on tour. He was like, I'm playing a show. I was like, oh, where? He's like, Rocket Town. I was like, what band are you in? He was like, the Devil Wears Prada. And I was like, ah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Been hearing about you. I used to listen to you guys. That's he cool. Was, he didn't seem super stoked that he was still in the Devil Wears Prada. Right. But yeah. he had like really. Jobby job. Yeah. Sorry. Anyways, what were you talking no, about? No, no, it's all good. Um, we were talking about Trump and, and he was saying, fuck Trump and all this stuff, like as, as like a, just a tagline. And I was like, yeah, I get it. Fuck Trump. I get that. But like my, as a tagline promoting the show, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's new like, one. come Hang to on. make it perfect. Fuck Trump. Fuck Trump. I got to pull my pants up. No, he actually said what? it. He was this, I think he said it at the end of every show. Oh, oh, yeah. like when he's like on stage and stuff. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Totally. Thank you. And so we were we were talking, and I was like, 
yeah, I get that fuck Trump thing. I, I, I get that. But I think I, I, at that point in my life, I was like experiencing, I was, I was studying narcissism quite a bit and I, I, I really think that's compelling. Um, it shows up in my family quite a bit. And like, I was, I was, I didn't have such a, you ready for this? I didn't have such a negative view of him at that point because the level of, um, the, um, when he would talk, I just find it really compelling because the shit that would come out of his mouth, I was like, this is unbelievable. And I was being sold on it, you know what I'm saying? And so I look back at that and I'm like, I don't know, it's just a kind of a learning, feel, learning moment. For you me. feel like his like confident hex that he has on people kind of worked on you, you feel like early um, on? I think it was more of the, more of the, um, the personality that I could see myself displaying in his, uh, mm. that, like, that is like his personality. I know it's in there, but yeah. I'm aware that it's in there and I'll be damned if I want to try to go toward something not like that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad that I can tell that it's in there sometimes, you know? You yeah, know, that's what I thought of when it's I first truth. met you. I was like, dude, this guy is so much like Trump, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Spot on. See? That's... Well, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I'm just talking about like in the, in the... No, I know what you're saying. Why did I go to this blue here? Red, white, and blue, bro. <laughs> Dude, I feel like I'm in a vortex. Like, or not a vortex, but I feel like I'm this is a portal. That's what I'm, it's portal time, dude. Portal time? Um, yeah, I'm trying to, trying to get something going on here. I'm trying to lay, lay a base down. We got four more hours. Okay, sick. <laughs> sick. This kid. Man. I'm trying to, I, you know, I, I was talking to Luke <clears throat> earlier. Um, I was like, I feel like, I feel like this one is going to be di uh, a little more difficult for me because I don't know you very well. And I even said to Luke, I said, I feel like I'm going to meet my match on this episode, man. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like I just, I find you really uh, articulate and thoughtful and, and uh, I try and say nice words. Thank yeah, you. dude. <laughs> I don't know. And it was like, it was like, um, I was nervous. Oh true. yeah, yeah. Dude, it, ma it makes me feel better that you were nervous. Cool. Dude, this is your job, man. I know, this buddy. Your, this is your passion, dude. Yeah, we we met like when I, I think I was probably like fifteen, <laughs> and I was that creepy old dude Maybe. at shows. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, dude, you were sick. We were at the we had anchor, a good time. I think the anchor. Yeah. Whoa! Blast from the past. Yeah. Man, used to go there at church. Oh it was, yeah. It was cool for a time for a time, and you move on, you know. I used to park there all the time yeah, when I was yeah. like downtown because mm -hmm. it was free and you could just, I remember being able to park downtown for free. <laughs> it was just a thing that used to happen. Now it's 50 God blessed dollars. Yeah, Not Harper and I were driving around like early COVID and uh -huh. we like, we're running an errand and we were like, we should just like drive down Broadway just for the fun of it and see what it's like. Mm -hmm. And we both at the same time like got nostalgic and we we're like whoa oh, wow it reminds us of like being kids and going to shows and like being able to just drive around downtown and there wasn't really anybody there you know right now they got that diagonal sidewalk now they got those 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 party carts you ever do, when you see the party carts do you fucking hate them yeah i mean do you want to be on one somewhere in you yeah <laughs> cool i feel like both i feel like both we were having that talk we were like we were like at Otaku before this all happened, mm -hmm. and like one of them went by because mm -hmm. they're always down in the in the glitch, you know. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. we were like, oh, we would never like be like that on there. But I was like, nah, we probably would. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like, we'd probably get really drunk and like you know, yes, be in our Daisy Dukes twerking at like ten a.m. Like, <laughs> just not giving a shit. Yeah, yeah. There's part of me that wants to do it. It's the only way. And they don't get, like, no matter how pissed you are in your car, no. I don't give a fuck, you know there's, what I'm saying? They just don't care, man. There's, there's got to be something. As they it. shouldn't give a fuck, man. Yeah, dude. They paid good money to do yeah. that. Um, get up there. Man. Did, did you ever see the, uh, I mean, those ones are already kind of gross, but do you ever see the uh, hot tub ones, dude? Fuck oh, yes. <laughs> Who and, thought of that shit? Dude, man. and they like That's weren't really like, uh, they weren't open air because like water spills, I guess, but you're literally in this like <laughs> vinyl like cage.
cage in hot water with people like rolling around downtown. You wear a seatbelt in that shit or what? Hell no, buddy. A God. I mean, like in the, you know, when you put your butt up to the jet ever in a hot tub yeah. or something like that? Or do they wear like a seatbelt to keep you intact from all the sloshing and shit? You never put your butt up to the jet ever? Yeah. Okay. The you part of the butt that I'm referring to is my butt cheek, so get your head out of the fucking way. <laughs> That's a free enema, man. You just Dude, I was doing enemas for a long time. Yeah. Like, like, I was doing coffee enemas. I was like about crazy. to say, were you doing the coffee? Yeah. The, yeah, the yeah, fefe? Yeah, yeah. It was meditative, man. I, I, uh... <laughs> it was, I was zinned out, dude. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I entered another room. Yeah. I was like, I was like, yo. I don't know. But when the, when the warm... Did every, you get anybody hot? ever done a uh, coffee enema? Like, I'm being serious. No? Cool. Um, what? Did, did you ever, did you get, like, really high off coffee? I did a couple times, but... What, from what I've read about coffee enemas, it, the caffeine effect isn't as intense as if you in, really? uh, ingest it. Yeah. I thought um, that it would be more. I did too. I did too. Because that's where you absorb all your, all the nutrients in your body is your colon. Right. And like, so I was doing these coffee enemas because I was trying to heal. I was trying to do some health stuff and curve. I'm um, like anti-authority a lot. And if someone tells me that this is the only way it's going to be done, I'll be like, well, you know. <laughs> well, I'll let me put this up food. my butt and yeah. see about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get that coffee brewing, man. I'll show you. Um, but uh, I did 350 of them in one year. What? And, yeah, and it was probably too many. But <laughs> I, dude, I, you, you, got, you got addicted to, I, I to, I to, did, to the butt Joe, dude. I think I did, man. <laughs> the butt Joe? Hell yeah. That's a good, that's a good, that Mike Karanica has a coffee company called Dogma. They need to have a freaking butt joke. Yeah. This is specifically brewed for coffee enema. For anal, anal joke. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What a conversation. I feel like, I feel like um, I wanted it to go a certain way, but. I'm oh, sorry. No, 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 it's, it's actually wonderful because it takes me out of my zone, dude. Dude, that, th this uh, reminds me of like, a, like, a, like the opening in a, in a, in a forest that mm. is just gonna swallow you whole, bro. Mm. I like that. It, Some petals and stuff like that. Did you ever that. see Arrival? Huh? Did you ever see Arrival? Arrival? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Dude, uh, yeah, I was just thinking about the ship that lands and arrival is just like basically this shape it's a big oval i think it's my favorite movie i've ever seen but i've only seen it once so i should probably double oh, wow. back and make sure that that's still accurate <laughs> wow what about it makes it your favorite yeah i just i was just beautiful i mean i love sci-fi stuff mm -hmm. it's kind of just my favorite genre of like movie you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. but it was it felt more alien than a, any other alien movie oh, you excellent. know in monster movies when they reveal like finally how it looks or how it sounds yeah. it loses your bomb totally yeah this just kept going like everything you found out it felt even more like weird and you're like oh wow who who uh made that movie uh what's his name who wrote yeah. feeling away yeah. Didn't, yeah. yeah cool yeah he i think he's my favorite band dude he mm. he rips you're the best around you know what i'm talking about okay I used to, I was, when I was a kid, my favorite thing to listen to before I went to sleep was the Final Countdown. Like, you know, you just get to go to bed. And like, yeah. also like uh, 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 Karate Kid, um, that song. You're the best around, you know, pumping me up. For oh yeah. School, you know what I mean? Dude, that's exactly yeah. how I'd want to picture a young Rado. Just like going to bed like, yes, let's go to sleep. That's the round, bro. <laughs> Get your pillows fluffed, brother. <laughs> On your waterbed. Did you have a waterbed? Yeah. My dad worked at Waterbed Gallery and. What? I don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you start this with that? <laughs> thanks, thanks. I was trying to be cool. That's cool? Working at Waterbed Gallery? Yeah. Hey, yeah. man. It's super sick. They Dude, waterbeds were like the pinnacle of luxury, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. He know? would work at Waterbed Gallery then, man. <laughs> What was I gonna say? Um, and then my, my, my dad was, this is what he tells me, I don't know if this is the case, but um, he was filling a waterbed and there was two levels to this swanky, bougie place. So he was filling a waterbed upstairs and uh, forgot to not fill it anymore and he flooded the place. Ooh. And then I don't know what happened after that. 
<laughs> Maybe got booted. I don't know. I don't know. I was saying that waterbeds are like mm -hmm. such a weird, dumb idea that humans had. And I feel like it's going to be lost in history that we tried that for a second. You think and so? I think there should be a museum dedicated Waterbeds. to bad ideas that humans did, oh, you know? Because like, I wonder like what other like stupid shit people tried that we have no idea about like weird hats or like something. Weird you know? hats? I, I want people to like look back and be like, you know, for a second there in the 90s, they were like, we it's really, <laughs> it's a great idea to sleep on water. It wasn't. No, I think it messed my back up a oh, little yeah. bit. Hey, yes. Whenever, whenever we can take a break, I'm, I ran out of card space. So I need We're going to take a break. Oh, all right. It's going to be cool. Then we'll come back, paint, hang for like, I don't know, how long? Another while. I don't know. Another minute, and then we'll just go to question and answer if you want. Well, no, we're doing that regardless. So if you'd like to <laughs> hang and do that, we're going to party really hard. Can I keep painting? Yes, I'm okay, going to. Okay, cool. I'm not going to get this finished in time. Okay. So.